Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Dell EMC World. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Paul Gillen. We are joined by, by Youngbin Lee. She is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Storage and Availability here at VMware. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks for uh, having me, Rebecca, I am Paul. You're yeah. a CUBE veteran, so you're back again. We always love having Glad you on the back. program. Yeah. So, so let's talk about, let's start by talking about 14G, a new server, mm -hmm. um, better, faster. What's different about it? Well, you know, uh, we are very excited to work with uh, Dell very closely on the 14G uh, development and launch. You know, really looking for better together opportunity. Certainly coming from uh, my uh, business unit, uh, storage and availability, you know, we're building hyper-converged infrastructure solutions on top of the 14G uh, servers. Uh, there are many things that's you know, coming with the 14G that really enhance what we can achieve through HCI. So, you know, one of my most excited uh, feature is the 19X more NVMEs that's available on 14G. Think about, you know, how much that can translate into storage performance and, and capacity. So, uh, you know, so, so we have been working very closely behind the scene. Uh, the engineering teams uh, work uh, closely and we're uh, aiming to make our solution available, the, the vSAN software uh, ready uh, for 14G, on day zero of 14G shipping. This is another benefit for our product, a vSAN and hyper-converged uh, software. We're really taking advantage of the hardware innovation at the very beginning when they are available to our customer. And what, when, you were, when you were doing the research to come out with this, what was it from customers that you were hearing in terms of, I guess I'm trying to ask, how are customers helping you innovate? We heard a lot about this since this morning's keynote. Right. Is being inspired to innovate based on what mm -hmm. the feedback you're getting from customers? Yeah, so uh, certainly staying very uh, you know, centric to our customers is important in uh, leading our innovation. So, uh, so for example, for the uh, flagship uh, product that my group developed at VMR vSAN. You know, we uh, just launched the sixth generation uh, of the product, and sixth generation in uh, three years, and a lot of the capabilities that we have in there is really driven by what our customer have asked for us. You know, better performance, better TCO, better security, better operation uh, simplicity. You know, all these things we're responding. Um, I think both to the advancement of technology, what's happening in the technology itself, but also responding to how our customers are asking us to better improve their experience. How, how rapidly are customers moving to virtualize their storage or, or to mm -hmm. move to software-defined storage? Is this, uh, is this happening at uh, the, the pace that you anticipated? Uh, it's actually happening in a very major way. If you think about our product has been on the, pro, uh, on the market for um, uh, three years and we really keep up the innovation engine so that you know, we started uh, building a robust enough of the storage solution and then you add you know, a lot of operation uh, day two and management simplicity. And then you leverage all the advances in uh, uh, hardware advance and also we're looking at uh, cloud integration. So, um, so the, uh, the customer has been adopting it in a pretty major way. Last year I was at a cube uh, around this time and I call last year the year of HCI. Um, and we definitely see that momentum continue. And when I call it a year of HCI, this is where you know, all the vendors start to build HCI solutions you know, in a mainstream fashion. And customers are adopting it in a mainstream fashion. We have a lot of customers running multiple uh, petabytes of data uh, in uh, vSAN for their business critical application. So this uh, movement is definitely happening. Now, now that you are so closely aligned with Dell, does yeah. this change the game as far as the the, the, uh, the power that you can get out of the Dell servers? Yeah. Essentially, is Dell does Dell have most favored nation status now for for <laughs> VMware? Uh, very good question, uh, Paul. Uh, you know, when we were part of uh, EMC, uh, you know, in the early days of software-defined storage, it's kind of tricky to navigate, you know, being owned by a storage company and then we're building a new way of delivering uh, storage. And, you know, fast forward to now, uh, together with Dell and Dell EMC, uh, we're seeing a lot of the dynamic uh, change. Uh, so there is a strong belief 
at Michael Dell's level of software-defined storage is ready for a lot of the mainstream x86 workloads. So there is support and um, and you know all the way from uh, the senior management in the company. And we're also increasingly see how the two companies uh, take a very complementary view of our portfolio and how we serve our customer better, rather than you know competing, rather than you know taking a look at that customer-centric view. How do we bring more value to it? our customers. And certainly looking at VMware continue to maintain a very open ecosystem, certainly working very closely with Dell. A lot of the capabilities we're uh, working with Dell you know, become available on Dell platform very quickly. Um, but in the meantime, we do maintain this open system. Um, I have to say, uh, Visa and the solution we build at VMware is the only truly hardware agnostic HCI platform that's on the marketplace. We work with uh, 15 leading server vendors, and nobody else is able to do that. We also work with a lot of cloud providers. It's also cloud agnostic. Um, yeah. I was just going to ask about the, the goal of VMware is to manage the whole data center. So yeah. how do you bring out these differentiated products but mm -hmm. also bring them together in the customer-centric way? Right, so I, I just came out of uh, Pat Gelsinger's uh, keynote and uh, you know he's making a bold prediction that today's infrastructure is going to be hyper-converged infrastructure based. But when we look at hyper-converged, it's not just compute and storage, but it's also you put on uh, uh, software-defined networking and you manage the whole thing by a uh, fully automated uh, management suite. And more importantly, this is not only a end-to-end software-defined data center solution, but also a seamlessly extending into a cloud with VMware's cross-cloud architecture. So uh, we absolutely are seeing the need of you know, creating this fully integrated set of uh, solutions to our customers because it's simply too hard for them to adopt them at the point product level. And with uh, our new uh, product suite uh, called VMware Cloud Foundation, so this is an integrated software stack, a turnkey stack with full lifecycle management, works for on-premise uh, environment as well as extending into the cloud. Well, what is vSAN support for cloud right now? Can I manage uh, cloud storage uh, transparently with my on-premise storage? So uh, if you think about vSAN provides uh, primary uh, storage need uh, for data center workloads. So, uh, so certainly we have uh, tons of on-premise uh, customer usage of uh, vSAN. Uh, vSAN today is also already cloud storage. If you look at VMware's uh, cloud ecosystem uh, set of partners, we have about 200 partners, uh, cloud provider partners, already they implemented vSAN as a way for them to deliver storage need uh, to their customer. If you look at uh, VMware's uh, AWS relationship, VMware Cloud on AWS, the only primary storage in that stack is going to be powered by vSAN. So, uh, you know, Paul, vSAN is definitely already running in the cloud, uh, but, you know, uh, we are also looking at a better way of, uh, hey, how we provide, you know, next layers of storage service on top of vSAN and leveraging the cloud economics of uh, the different type of storage solution, for example, in AWS, EBS and S3, and vSAN being old flash, high performance tier of storage, you know, how we can raise better fluidity among the different services available to the customers. Yanbin, you said that this was the year of hyper-convergent hyper -convergent infrastructure, the era of hyper-convergent infrastructure. What's next? I mean, after hyper-convergence, where, where do we go from here? Yeah, so uh, the way I see, you know, hyper-convergence is really a uh, architectural shift to help our customer modernize their data centers. You know, from our customer's point of view, they're not on a journey to modernize data center. They're on the journey to digital transformation. So, so the way we, you know, from VMware, we constantly think from a, uh, what do we see the infrastructure angle, but we definitely need to expand our value to better support application development, better support uh, data management, really to link the value of the infrastructure more directly to our customers' needs. So, so for example, how we support, you know, um, DevOps type of application development. Um, 
how we support you know new uh, age of workload, whether it's analytics or machine learning. You know how we help uh, our customer better manage and secure their data in this cross cloud world. So these are newer areas we are getting into. Is go beyond the infrastructure, but to application workload and data to truly help our customer with their business needs. So can you talk about how how uh, hyperconverged infrastructure and storage defined uh, software defined storage work together? Is HCI really a prerequisite for most effectively taking advantage of software defined storage? Um, I would say HCI is one way of uh, delivering uh, software-defined uh, storage. It's actually probably the most uh, uh, dominant way based on uh, customer um, uh, customer requirements and customer adoption. So I don't say it's a, a prerequisite. It's one way of uh, delivering a storage out of um, you know, using a software-defined approach. D does does vSAN pull in HCI business? I mean, our, our customers, is this a, an additional incentive for customers to move right. to hyperconverged? Yeah, so, uh, you know, HCI being a relatively new category, you know, the uh, taxonomy is going through a uh, lot of radical changes, you know, through our discussion with Wikibon and other uh, leading uh, analyst firms, we're constantly defining, hey, what is HCI? You know, if you think about the early days of HCI, it's largely defined as the appliance, the system level, kind of a hardware-centric view, we're seeing a very pronounced shift toward a software way of defining HDI. If you think about the secret sauce within HDI, it's not the box. The secret sauce is the software that's really converging your virtualized compute and virtualized uh, storage together. So, so it's, you know, we're seeing that movement toward um, a software way of consuming HCI. So, uh, you know, take a, a look at our business. You know, we do support vSAN as a software, vSAN ready nodes, or uh, VX3 as fully integrated appliance. You know, we continue to see about three quarters of our business come from a software consumption. And we're seeing other vendors also moving into, uh, moving into that direction. So, so Paul, to answer your question, I feel the VMware approach is to address the HCI movement at a software and architecture level and enable our customers to adopt it as software with the most flexibility or to buy it as the appliance with the simplicity and the integration or consume it in the cloud. So, so we're really trying to uh, uh, apply this architecture in all these different uh, consumption models. I want to ask you about the gender gap. This is something that, that I know you are a passionate advocate of getting more women yeah. into this field. Business Insider calls you one of the most powerful engineers working in the technology industry today. What do you see as, as, as something that will really help that, that VMware is doing to get more women into this business? Well, you know, certainly I'm so excited to see you, Rebecca, <laughs> as, uh, um, as a female host of theCUBE. The, Cube. the sisterhood. Here, um, so it's good to see, you know, even you guys are consciously making this type of uh, change. Um, at VMware, we have been on a mission to um, create a more inclusive environment for the past few years. Uh, uh, a program we have within a company called VMware, uh, VM Inclusion. Uh, you know, uh, the prior generation of that was VM Women. So with uh, lots of what I call a business-focused approach toward creating a more inclusive um, uh, workplace environment. You know, I'm just dying to see more diverse crowd at an uh, event like this. Clearly, we still you and have me a, both. <laughs> yeah, we still have a uh, lots of uh, work to do. But I'm excited to see quite a few um, female speakers on the main stage with uh, Carrie Quinto's uh, uh, yesterday with Diane Bryant. Uh, this morning, uh, you know, we had a killer. Um, VMR uh, female VP doing the demo for Pat uh, Pernima. You know she did a great job on stage. So just you know we need to start from having very visible women uh, in events like this and build on that momentum. Yeah, Yan Bing, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Well, so nice to, to see you again, uh, Rebecca, and nice to talk to you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for my co-host Paul Gillen. We will have more from Dell EMC World after this. Oh.